जय हिंद स्टूडेंट्स होप यू ऑल आर फिट एंड फाइन एट होम सो वी हैव स्टार्टेड दिस चैप्टर न्यू किंग्स एंड किंगडम्स एंड वी हैव कवर्ड इमरजेंस ऑफ न्यू डायनेस्टीज एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इन द किंगडम्स प्रशस्तीज एंड लैंड ग्रांट्स वॉरफेयर फॉर वेल्थ एंड अ क्लोजर लुक दी चोलास सो लेट अस मूव okay uh, uh, we'll be discussing about the temples uh, splendid temples and the bronze sculpture so raja raja one uh, was the most powerful chola ruler and his son rajendra one raided ganga valley sri lanka and countries of southeast asia and also developed the navy for his expeditions uh, we'll be discussing about tanjavur and gangai konda cholapuram which were built by raja raja and rajendra one so Uh, these two temples are architectural marvels uh, of the medieval period uh, the temple under the cholas were the nuclei of the villages the centers of crafts and were well endowed with land from the king and the other rich people now the produce of the land helped uh, maintain the uh, it, it went uh, for the maintenance of all the specialists who worked at the temple and those people who lived near it for example the priest the garland makers the cooks the sweepers the musicians and so on so in short we can say that uh, the temples were not only a place of worship but they were the hub of economic social and cultural life and amongst the crafts associated with the temples the making of bronze images was the most distinctive you will find a figure figure 4 in your book for the same the next uh, topic is agriculture and irrigation so uh, many of the achievements of the cholas were made possible because they did a huge development or they had a huge development in the field of agriculture uh, the kaveri river breaks into many channels before emptying itself into the bay of bengal now these branches uh, were flooded by rains and they deposited fertile soil on the banks which in turn helped the agriculture in that region by the 5th and the 6th century large scale cultivation started in the kaveri valley how as forests were cleared and they were leveled for creating more agricultural or cultivable land in the delta region embankments were built to prevent flooding and canals were constructed to carry water to the fields then they also developed artificial irrigation uh, which took place with the construction of wells and water tanks So this is a picture which depicts artificial. Uh, the next topic is uh, agriculture and irrigation. And if you see, there are number of uh, types of land which is mentioned in your book also. So the types of land are uh, first one is Vellanga Bagai, uh, which means land of the non-Brahman peasants. Brahmadeya, that is land gifted to the Brahmins, and so on. We will be studying in detail further. So the administration of the empire. Now peasant settlements, known as Gaur, became very prosperous with the advent of artificial irrigation. Group of such villages formed a uh, group called as Nadu, and with the village council, uh, they administered the villages by collecting taxes and maintaining justice. rich peasants of the vilella dynasty controlled the functioning of these nadus under the watchful eye of the chola emperor the chola kings also gave titles such as muvendavelan uh, and arya to rich people as a mark of respect the brahmins were given land grants known as brahmadeya which we had discussed earlier which resulted in more and more brahmins settling in the kaveri valley each brahmadeya was looked after a sabha Uh, or an assemble of the brahmins landlords and who these people were highly efficient then there were association of the traders no, uh, called as nagarams also which helped in the town administration now there are inscriptions in, in uttara mirror uh, in tamil nadu which shows how the sabhas function and the committees that looked after uh, the irrigation or the gardens or the temples etc now how were the members chosen of these committees the members were chosen by means of lottery the last topic is inscriptions and text now who could be a member of the sabha it is mentioned that uh, all those who wish to be a member of the sabha should be owners of land 
and from those land revenue was to be collected then they should have their own homes the third criteria was that they should be between 35 to 70 years of age the fourth one was they should have knowledge of the vedas and the last one was they should be well versed in administrative matters and be honest now anyone uh, has been a member of any committee in the last three years he cannot uh, or he could not become a member of another committee so this was there uh, this is what is there in the chapter we will be discussing about the doubts in the live class till then jai